Another red lens that we can take a look at when it comes to language real quick, and again, don't rush the, the stage and try to come beat me up, I'm just gonna throw it out there for you, is that, whoops, is that at the end of the day, unfortunately, many people, maybe it's not you, but many people sell the way people don't buy. People, in your notes, people buy emotionally. They justify their decisions intellectually. Look at how you sell. Look at how you go to market. Look at the fact that you think a leading indicator is go get me facts and I will prove to them that they need to buy this. That's selling to the intellect. People buy emotionally, they justify it intellectually. Just imagine for a moment what your numbers would look like if your team actually sold the way people bought. Blue lens, let's take a look at the blue lens real quick. I know I'm gonna ask kind of a dumb question, everyone's gonna shake their head and say of course, but do you have people on board that's part of your team that fall into the not enough syndrome? They don't have enough first appointments, they don't have enough fact finders, they don't have enough referrals, right? They don't have enough going on, they don't have enough fact finders cases, they don't have enough. It happens all the time. Maybe some of you even look at the person next to you and they have a, the not enough syndrome too, but it has to do with recruiting. But when we look at not enough for a second with your producers, do you realize through the blue lens, looking at the blue lens, you've taught them what to do, you've taught them how to do it, the scripts. You even gave them the ideal work day or work week so they understand when they're supposed to do it. Maybe you even scheduled, right now is the time for you to take that activity and do it. But they choose not to do the actions. Do you realize there are five common mental roadblocks, five, that hold back your producers, like clockwork. And as managers and leaders, do we even know what they are? Do we know how to coach to them? Do we know how to identify them? Do we know how to fix them? Worse yet is, do we even know what they are so we interview out of them so we don't hire stuff that we have to fix? One of those top fives is something called need for approval. Another one that pops up that's huge and newer in the organization is being seen as that guy or that girl. It's the ugliness of selling. It's the Ned, is that me? So it's Ned Ryerson. Remember that? You guys ever watched that movie, Groundhog Day? Guy runs across the street, every scene, hey, you want some insurance? Do you realize, on, a, on an odd sense, that some of you actually have people back in your agency right now, that when they look at what they do, it's dirty. When did sales turn into an ugly, you have one of the most admirable professionals that are out there, 100% across the board, we know that. But do your juniors? I'm telling you, you go back to your office and you ask your individuals, give me the top five words that pop in your head when I say the word sales. They aren't gonna be positive words. Shark, salesman, polyester wearing, commissions, right? For a second there, we're thinking we're talking about senators. <laughs> so, it's insane. That's a big problem. You're teaching them to be something that internally they don't like.